I was wondering, using triangles, how many of them would I need to approximate a sphere that would be rounder than Earth? I found this to be an interesting guess to make, and you can make it too. Having heard that Earth is rounder than a billiard ball, and given how broad the world seems to be, I was expecting something around hundreds of thousands or millions of triangles. First, how round is Earth? Its closest and farthest points from its center are not the highest and lowest relative to sea level. Sea level draws an oblate spheroid shape, not a perfect sphere. Instead, the extremes are the Litka Deep in the Arctic Ocean and the summit of Chimborazo in Ecuador, with a 33 km difference in their distances to the center. The ratio of the distances to the center is around 0.995, meaning the closest point is 0.5% closer to the center of the Earth than the farthest point. Now, how can I divide a sphere into triangles? Ideally, this would be an efficient division, so I would have a result close to the minimum of triangles needed. I thought of starting from a usual globe division and dividing its squares into triangles, but I realized some triangles would be really stretched compared to others, which isn't ideal as it creates a big difference between the distance from the center to a vertex of the triangle and the distance from the center to the closest point on the surface of the triangle. Even dividing a perfect square, which would result in two right triangles, isn't as good as having equilateral triangles. Then I discovered the world of geodesic polyhedra, sphere approximations usually built from tetrahedra, octahedra or icosahedra. The result of such a sphere looks nice, and every triangle of it is relatively close to equilateral. You simply choose a polyhedron, subdivide all its faces into triangles, and project each vertex of these triangles to a sphere, using a common radius. The subdivision is unique to the frequency, a parameter which defines how much a face is divided. Ok, so we need to choose a base polyhedron. The icosahedron seems to be the best, 20 faces, each of them equilateral, and 12 vertices each of them belonging to five faces, which is more than the tetrahedron and the octahedron. The icosahedron is a sphere approximation in itself, and the best one if we are limited to 20 triangles. Above 20 triangles, making a geodesic sphere from an icosahedron might not be the best optimization, but should stay close to the minimum. It would be nice to find the minimum number with a proof for it, but I couldn't achieve it for now. So I went for an icosahedron base. But how can I find the extremes of a geodesic sphere to compare their ratio with Earth's? The maximum distance to the center is easy, it is the projection radius of every vertex, we can choose it arbitrarily. The minimum one is the closest point of its surface to the center. As each triangle subdivision is the same, we can look for one of these points in a single original triangle. The subtriangle at the center of an original face will be the most projected one, therefore the one with the biggest edges, making it one of the sphere's triangles in which lies a point with the minimal distance to the center. Finding the distance between the center of the sphere, 0, 0, 0, and the plane in which this triangle is, gives us the distance of the closest point of that sphere to its center. And we are now coming to the results. Calculating the min-max ratio for different frequencies reveals that 8 is the minimal frequency of an icosahedron geodesic division that creates a better sphere approximation than Earth is. Phew! That means 1,280 triangles are enough to make a better sphere than Earth, way less than I expected. I haven't looked much further for optimization, I don't even know whether it is optimizable, but I think so. If you find a better optimization, or a proof of a better or of the best triangle division, I'd love to hear about it. Hope you enjoyed.